Hey guys, today's topic is bleed in dinos. In the past, more and more dinos that apply bleed have been introduced to the game. Bleed is a very important status effect and a very important addition to the game because the health pool of the enemies became bigger and bigger over time. And the damage in arc is limited to the 255 points the dinos have. So if you don't want to higher the damage output of the dino in particular, then you want to have status effects that add more damage to an attack. The bleed damage helps to apply more damage to the normal melee damage and the bleed also scales with the life of the enemy which helps balancing the dino damage to stronger enemies. So therefore you can use dinos against strong enemies without making them too OP for the normal game. Bleed also adds a value to animals that did not have a place in the meta anymore since all their functionalities were outdated. If you look to the Karno, the Karno has been out of meta for a very long time and with a bleed addition, they became part of the meta again. There are several dinos that apply bleed, but I will focus on four dinos in particular and those are four land dinos. And they all take in the same role in a specific niche. So I'm not talking about the Kentrosaurus because the Kentrosaurus only applies bleed to smaller animals. I am also not talking about the Stegosaurus because the Stegosaurus does apply bleed, but only to enemies that have a very low health pool due to being already very hurt. So therefore there are only finishers, but you need another dino to do the damage first in order for the Stegos to finish. So I'm not talking about the Stegos as well. What I'm talking about today is the Tylacoleo, the Allosaurus, the Deinonychus and the Carnotaurus. And we want to find out which dino is the best to apply bleed and which combination of dinos is the best to max out the bleed damage. The first experiment I did was to find out which dino is the best for solo bleed. And here I came to the results that if you are not riding the dino and if you're just whistling the dino, the Tylacoleo does the best damage, then the Carno, then the Deinonychus and then the Allo. The Allo is just on the last place and on the last spot because the Allo cannot apply bleed when it's alone. The Allo just needs at least another Allo with it to have the alpha status and only the alpha can apply bleed. So therefore the Allo is on this last spot but since I wanted to test all dinos the Allo had to be included somehow. For ridden dinos it is the same just that you do more damage when you ride the dino but overall the placement of the dinos is the same. Then we had the experiment number two and that was which dino is best in a group. And with group I mean together with at least one other dino that applies a mate boost to it or maybe even a boost in general. So here I had again the Tyler Coleo on the first spot, then the Carno, then the Allo and then the Deinonychus. And that came as a surprise to me because the dino always was said to be the one that does the OP bleed damage and had like the OP abilities and so on. But the Deinonychus actually was on the last spot when it came to that. I did this experiment unridden and therefore the group boost that the Deinonychus has was not applied to this one. So overall the damage output of the Deinonychus was the lowest of all of them. And then to my experiment number three. I take a clean dino group with maxed melee damage and put them together and look how long it takes until they kill a titanosaur. I had to choose the titanosaur because the titanosaur takes reduced damage from dinos, has a high health pool and it always spawns with the same deaths and therefore I could have a better way to compare the dinos. The problem with other dinos is when you want to have one with a very high health pool, therefore a lot of levels, it was harder to spawn them in and have them being consistent all, all the way through. So the titanosaur was the best to choose. The goal is to have a base time to find out how long they need to kill the titanosaur and then to see if I combine them in different groups which bleed stacks with another bleed or where do I see advantages or disadvantages. 
I did every single of these fights three times and then I took the average time of all of them. One thing that is important to mention with the dinos that we are talking about today, there are two different kind of bleed that are used in these animals. Even though it says bleed with all of them, the way the bleed works is different. We have first the bleed from dinos and that bleed is actual damage that is based on the server tick, the melee damage of the animal combined with the life pool of the enemy. So all these three things work together and that does the bleed damage. But then we have the bleed damage of the Carno, Elo and Dino and that damage is not real damage that gets applied to the Dino, like with the Dinonicus, but an internal function will calculate the damage that the animal will take and will reduce it from the dino stat. And that is called the dino character status component. I know that's like a long, very technical term, but that is important to explain my result later. Every time you see something like 5% of bleed is removed within 10 seconds, then you know that the dino character status component is used and that is with Carno, Elo and Dino. In the first round, I figured out how long two Tylers will need to kill a Titanosaur and how long four Tylers will need to kill a Titanosaur. For two Tylers, it was one minute, nine seconds. And for four Tylers, it was one minute and one second. With the Elos, that was my next experiment. It was one minute 56 for two and one minute 37 for four. If you combine now two Elos and two Tylers, it takes one minute and nine seconds and you have heard that before because that was also the time of the Tylers. So a group of Elos and Tylers don't do more damage than only two Tylers. And to me it looked like that the Elo damage is completely ignored by the game. And that tells us that the bleed of those two will not stack. In the second round I took the time for the Carnos and for two Carnos it was one minute and 56 seconds. And for four Carnos, it was one minute and 41 seconds. If you then combine two Carnos on two Tylers, it was one minute 39. And this time the Tyler numbers get totally ignored and the damage is as if the Carno only would apply the damage. So while two Tylers alone would kill it in one minute and nine seconds, when you add two Carnos, the Tylers became worse, which tells us the bleed of these two will also not stack. And then we come to the Elos. If you combine the Carno with the Elos, so two Carnos to Elos, you get to 1 minute 38. So the Carno and the Elo are very similar to the output damage and they are very similar to the bleed damage. And I assume that one bleed will cancel the other bleed, but with these numbers it's impossible to say which cancels which and it also wouldn't make a difference. One thing we can say for sure though is that those bleed mechanics also don't stack because otherwise the damage would be much higher and the time to kill the titanosaur would be much lower. So therefore Elo and Carno also does not stack. And then we came to the fourth round and that was the Deinonychus. So I took the time of the Deinonychus and here it's important again to mention that the Deinonychus is the only bleed that is not decided by the dino character status component, but it's by server tick, melee damage and by the life of the victim or of the enemy. And two dinos would kill a titanosaur in two minutes and 40 seconds and four dinos would kill a titanosaur in two minutes and 26 seconds. As you can see, dinos alone were very bad <laughs> in killing things. They were like last place, last placement. They were the slowest to kill stuff. But now we come to the point where we combine the dino with the other bleed applying animals. So the Deinonychus and the Elo combined would kill a Titanosaur in 1 minute 13. And that is lower than the dino alone or the Elo alone, which means it stacks. The bleed of both combined stacks and you do more damage. Since Kano and Elo do basically the same, I was not surprised that two dinos and two Carnos would also take 1 minute and 13 seconds. And if you now combine two Deinonychus with two Tylercoleus, you could even kill a Titanosaur in 50 seconds only. So those results, having those other bleed dinos combined with two dinos, improved the damage of all bleeders pretty well. So what it tells us is that those bleed numbers stack, 
but the dino alone does not very good bleed damage, but it will boost the bleed damage of the other animals. And now the question, what is actually happening here? So I asked Steven and I asked Alex, you know Steven already, um, he is our cluster admin and Alex is an admin for the ArcWiki and I asked them to help me look into the dev kit to see what is happening and we couldn't find a reason why the bleed shouldn't stack. So there was nothing that told the game don't stack this. So there was no reason why the Tyler and the Carno and the Allo would perform so poorly when you combine them. And the possibility is that the Dino character status component is broken and that it causes a bug which prevents the bleed to stack or to combine each other. But we couldn't see this in the dev kit. The thing is why we think it might be broken is that this dino character status component also broke another thing and uh, that is healing buffs or healing food for dinosaurs. A lot of modded healing food for dinosaurs, I think Primal Fear has the problem and we have the problem as well, stopped working after one patch. I don't remember which patch it was but one patch broke the ability to heal dinos and the reason is if the dino has another buff that buff will prevent the dino to get the healing buff. So there's no chance that those two buffs work on one dino. If we look back, the bleeding is also kind of a buff, but it's applied to another dino, but, there, but still it doesn't work together. And it could be that this is the reason, because it also just shows up with those dinos that use the dino character status component. So it might be the reason it could be, or it could not be. That is how far we got with our research. But for you, it's probably now important to have an interpretation of the results. I'll give you my rundown of what we do with what we found out. First of all, Allos and Carnos are equally good when it comes to the pure bleed and damage output. But you need to keep in mind that only the alphas in Allo groups can apply bleed, so not every dino. You want to use them for single target attack. So when you know you need to attack one single specific dino, then an allo group is perfect for that. But keep in mind you need at least two allosaurus in order to have one that becomes the alpha. With a Carnos every animal can apply bleed and therefore you can use it either for single target but also for crowd control. So if you are in a situation where you are crowded by enemies that you need to kill fast, then the Carno or a Carno group is pretty good for that. The Tyler Coleo is the best dino to apply bleed solo because the Tyler Coleo does twice as much bleed damage to an enemy than the other animals do. And therefore the Tyler Coleo numbers were always very good and the time to kill the enemies was always very short because it does twice the damage for bleed. Tyler Coleo is, is a perfect animal to kill stuff fast. You just need to keep in mind that the bleed with the Tyler Coleo is just half the length of the bleed of the Carno and the Allosaurus. So you need to hit every 5 seconds instead of every 10 seconds. So you need to apply it constantly. The Deinonychus on the other hand is the only animal that can apply bleed to bosses. So if you need to apply bleed to bosses like we did in our Alpha Dragon tutorial, then the Deinonychus is your way to go. Outside of the boss arena I would not use it as your single only bleed animal, but I would just use it as a bleed booster for other bleed animals, since other bleed animals are a little bit more tanky than the Deinonychus. So if you have an Allo group or if you have a Carno group, then you can just ride along with them on a Deinonychus and just do support bleed. Combining Carnos and Tylers is normally a bad idea because the Tyler bleed advantage, that it does more bleed, is blocked by the Carnos. But if you have to combine them, then try to use an additional Deinonychus in order to even that out a little bit. Allos and Carnos on the other hand work fine together. I'm personally not very happy about the results I came to because I wish I could figure out why the bleed of the other animals doesn't stack and if it's intended or if it's unintended, if it's a bug or you know there's like this big question mark that is still there and that I cannot answer. But I'm not sure, I'm not sure if I will ever be able to answer it unless a dev tells me no that's intended or oh that's not intended, we haven't seen that. So until that happens I will probably not be able to answer that question. So all I can present to you are the results of my experiments and what we found so far. But if I will figure out why the stacking is broken the way it is, I will of course make a follow-up video so you can see this project 
as like work in progress. But I hope that this video helped you so far to figure out how the bleed works and how you can utilize it in your gameplay, how you can optimize and maximize your bleed damage output. And if you like guides and theory crafting like this video, then I would love you to leave me a sub to this channel and also a like to the videos so YouTube knows that this video was of value for you. Thank you for watching and thank you for watching this rundown of the bleed mechanic in ARC and I hope to see you next time. Bye!